every time one of these mines has come along, they've always promised that this time will be different. No mine ever predicts that they're going to pollute. Uh, you know, if they, if they predicted that, they wouldn't get a permit. Over the past hundred years, there have been thousands of hard rock mines that have been opened in the uh, western United States. And a substantial percentage of those are abandoned now. Um, there is nobody taking care of them. Um, except for the default, which is the government and the taxpayers. Um, some of those have, still have acid mine drainage problems even after decades, um, decades since they've closed. And the cost of cleaning them up has been estimated into the billions of dollars. We've had neighbors on either side of Minnesota, in South Dakota, in Wisconsin, have disastrous pollution problems from their mining, hard rock mining experiences, where aquatic systems are wiped out and the fish are killed and there's uh, pollution that's emanating from these mines. And in many cases, it can last for hundreds of years. Several colleagues of mine, uh, Jim Kuypers and Ann Mace, did a study back in 2005. And what they found was that uh, uh, if you had a metal sulfide mine uh, located in an area near surfaced water and groundwater, which is what most of the upper Midwest is like, uh, in about 80 percent or more of those cases you had a violation of water quality. Uh, a great example is a mine in South Dakota called the Brome Mine that operated from the late 1980s to the late 1990s. Um, the uh, developers of that mine claimed that the sulfide ores, uh, there was only about 1% sulfide in the ore that they would be mining and therefore uh, that was too low a level for any acid that might be created from exposure to air and water to have any impact on the streams. They were wrong. Uh, the, uh, the acid mine drainage from that mine totally destroyed a stream in the vicinity of the mine that the mine drained into.